Hey everybody, this is Andy Brown. I'm the head instructor at the Conner School of Real Estate. And I am about to help you with number 21 on our free broker math practice exam, which is on our website at climberrealestateschool.com. This one's a little complicated, but you know it's in the book and you're probably going to get a question like it. So let me read it. 21. An investor paid $1 million for a building. NOI is $110,000. Expenses, including reserve for replacements, are $8,500. The total expenses are $32,750. Annual debt service is $72,600. Annual interest on the debt service is $65,678. The annual depreciation is $20,513. The investor is in the 36% tax bracket. What is her after-tax cash flow? Now, there's a lot of information here, but you know what? I think this is kind of important stuff for you to know. It's really, it's like secondary investment property analysis. It's kind of good for you to know even as a business person. So I want to show you what I've done on the board. I, I've kind of set up a fill in the blank scenario. I really feel like you, you're about to be a broker. You need to be comfortable with both of these flows. NOI, everything kind of starts with NOI, minus annual debt service. Now remember what NOI is. How much money is the building making you after you pay to run? It's kind of the only number people care about. Minus the debt service, which is, this is your annual mortgage payment, gives you before tax cash flow. And I hope that makes sense. If you've got to pay the bank, you don't have it in your pocket. From before tax cash flow, subtract federal income tax, which you're paying Uncle Sam, that gives you after tax cash flow. The question now is, how do you calculate federal income tax? Well, it's the second flow. You start again with NOI. Everything really starts with NOI. Add back in reserve for replacements. Remember, is an expense while you're analyzing a property, but not to the IRS. You haven't really spent the money. You set it aside. It's actually income because you earned it. They allow you, nice, to write off your mortgage interest, not the principal, the interest, and your depreciation. That gives you your taxable income. How much do you pay in taxes? You've heard me say this before. Depends on your tax bracket. Kind of a good problem to have. The, higher, the more money you make, the higher the tax bracket. That gives you your federal income tax, which goes right there and gives you your after-tax cash flow. So you know what? All I'm going to do right now is just fill in the blank. It's kind of like I have an Excel spreadsheet, but it's on the board. So let's see here. According to the problem, NOI is $110,000. So far, so good. Annual debt service is $72,600. I'm going to subtract that. It's going to be before tax cash flow. Now, uh, I did cheat a little bit, and if I can find my notes, wherever they are, before tax cash flow is $37,400. All right. So what do you do now? We've got to figure out what are we going to have to pay the IRS? Guess what? Go back to NOI. What is NOI? $110,000. And you know what? The problem gives it to you, right? Reserve for replacements, which is part of the expenses, but to the uh, IRS is income. Going to add back in $8,500. We get to write off mortgage interest, which according to the problem, and they give it to you $65,678. We get to write off depreciation. Fake loss, but hey, savings is savings, and they give it to us in the problem. It's $20,513. That is, if I've written the numbers down on my cheat sheet. Now, if I take this and add, subtract, and subtract, what that gives me is $32,309. But that's my taxable income. It's like what your CPA would be looking at. I had a good year. Apparently, I am in the 36% tax bracket. So, apparently, I'm going to be paying Uncle Sam $11,631. Now, 
All right. I take this number back to here. So I take my before tax cash flow, I subtract the income tax I've got to pay Uncle Sam, and that leaves me with an after tax cash flow of $25,000. $769. And you know what? I can put that in the bank and never worry about it again. I paid my taxes on it. So, kind of complicated, but you know what? I'd rather you get it right. It just takes a little bit of practice because that is how you do number 21, the after-tax cash flow thing. I really hope that helped you. If you have any questions, email me, andy.climberreschool at gmail.com. You can call me, 407-822-3926. I'll do the best I can to get back to you in the same day, but, you know, I have to do it during breaks and lunch and things like that. Uh, let me know how you do. I'd love to hear how you do, especially send me any memories that you hear that's weird on the exam, et cetera, et cetera. How about this? I'd love to meet you. Come to the broker post classes here at the school. We have the best broker post classes in the entire state of Florida. It's more of an experience than a class. You will love it. I promise you. Again, if you need any help, let me know. Above all, don't overthink the stuff, and as usual, good luck on the state exam.